ba doo ba All right, all right. Three, two, one, we're back. We're back with another episode. We've come into the great outdoors because we're talking about something we love, something that's very close to our hearts, and that is... The greatest gangster film you never saw. The greatest gangster film you've never seen, you've never heard of, you probably don't even know about. And it's called... Things to do in Denver when you're dead. Things to do in Denver when you're dead. Something we have never done before. Good one. <laughs> now, <laughs> like this, words, is, you know. this is, yeah, very good. Just different uh, angle. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. X, Y so, axis. Like, very good. Sorry. Yeah. Venn diagram, yeah. Pie charts. Anyway. So, yes. This film is one of our favorites. You may... Our favorite. Yes. Has shaped... Our teens, our late teens, when we saw it together, 1997, um, I think we essentially tried to, we tried to be Andy Garcia for the ensuing 10 years of our lives. He's the lead, by the way. Based on his interpretation of the lead character in this film, right? Yes. Which was the, which was the role that we both believe he was born to play. Yes. And this is like 10 years into like his like main film career. Right, right. Okay, this was the role that was like made for him. Now you may be asking, if it's the greatest film ever made. Why haven't you heard of it? Why haven't you heard of it? Right. Well, it was a massive box office flop when it first came out. The bomb. Right. Yeah. So how much was it made for? Eight million with box office receipts of 500,000. Wow. Yeah, Eight million slightly, to slightly, make slightly north and of it that. only made 500,000. Yeah. So it lost, carry the one. 7.5 million? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're the brains. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so this film was a big flop, and it. But like we say, we love it. You think it's like an almost perfect film? I think it is the. I think it is a perfect film. There you go. Which is quite the statement. So we want to put it out there. We want to explain to you why we love it so much, and maybe down the road you guys can watch it. Give us your feedback. And maybe, now, maybe, maybe we'll get sponsored by them. Maybe, maybe we'll get some, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, promotional credits for it. Yes, by the film that made no money. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, actually, the writer Scott Rosenberg since went on to write Con Air and a bunch of other films thereafter. Yes, tell us, okay. give us the details on who directed it and who's. So who's Gary in it. Fleder. Okay. Okay. Uh, it was not a, like a like a massively critically acclaimed uh, titan of the box office. Okay, but nevertheless, in researching, because yes, I we did do some research this time round, right? For a change. Yes, for a change. Um, Scott Rosenberg, yeah. whose film credits... This is actually the first film he wrote. Right. Okay, which is interesting. Rosenberg, well done. Right. Things are never dead. He subsequently wrote Con Air. Right. In my opinion, one of the great action films of the 90s okay. as well. But, but, okay. like, but not, not like not a critically acclaimed one, but no, like no, a fantastic... No. Yes. I think a lot of people can agree brainless. with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what disturbing behavior is. High Fidelity, that's a great film. Sure. John Cusack, okay, we don't right? need okay. to go through his filmography. Let's Gone in 60 seconds. Okay, can we talk about things to do in Denver when you're dead? Okay, he's done those films. <laughs> yes. You, did it, you tell us who directed it. Yes, Gary Fletcher. Okay, do you want to tell us who's in it? Okay, Andy Garcia as the main, uh, as the main, as the titular character. Protagonist. Right? Jimmy the St. Tosnia. Okay. Yep. Um, who is, or you want to the rest of the who's cast. Who's the antig antagonist? Antagonist, Christopher Walken. Christopher one Walken. One of the great screen actors of our time. Yes. In his most delicious villainous role yeah. I would say um, <laughs> and then a very very good supporting cast of I would say character actors Treat Williams Gabrielle Anwar Christopher Lloyd uh, William Forsyth uh, Bill Nunn Steve Buscemi Steve Buscemi right. uh, Feruza Balk whoever that uh, is uh, who else is basically lot, you know lot, a lot kind of, of big names there so even more of a surprise why it did so badly so why do we think it did so badly well first of all maybe the title things to do in Denver when you're dead doesn't exactly roll off the tongue what is that film about what I, so you know there's that I think which maybe worked against it I think it also came out came out at a time when there were lots of these like you know supposed Scorsese and especially Tarantino clone. Yeah, so this was the like, like late films. 90s. Exactly. Pulp Fiction had just come out. Everybody was trying to copy it. All these Correct. like weird films, Seven Psychopaths, Sex, Six Heads in a Duffel Bag. True whatever. Romance. True, True Romance, romance. Is written by Tarantino actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, that's what I'm saying. So that is, that is again, in that, you know, in that vein. So I guess yeah. maybe people were expecting it to be somewhat like that or somewhat like Goodfellas. And it's not like those films. It's not, but even it's if it better. Was, <laughs> it's, but even if it was like that, right? Yeah. But it delivered. So what? But actually, it's not like that. No. And it's actually just a 
every bit as good. Yes. In many ways, superior. Because I yeah. think like, well, we'll get, we'll cut, we'll, we'll, we'll get onto that. I mean, it's still like ranked what thirty seven percent on Rotten on Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes, which is extraordinary. Exactly. So that means that even even with you know twenty five years of hindsight, Jesus world. Yeah. <laughs> That, yeah. that um, it hasn't sort of developed like an amazing cult following. No. Right? No. Okay. No. So well, yeah, it's funny that we liked it so much and a couple of our friends were really into it, it yeah. but seemingly nobody else. Yeah, it's true. And I mean, I don't know. I've done little searches on YouTube yeah. and, and Google and like there's not much on it either, by mm. the way, you know, that's, and it's hard to find. That's until the pondering ponytail brings it back to life. I like it. Like, I like that? It. You like that? Like 40 strong subscribers and growing baby. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, so those are the reasons why it probably didn't work. Now let's talk about the reasons why it's so good. All right, good. that's what we want to talk about. Okay. okay, so let me start. Go ahead. Okay, for me, we love films with like you know rich dialogue, right? We love films with like gangster dialogue as well, right? We, well, we, yeah, we always like, loved. Yeah, we yeah, always yeah, loved yeah, yeah. the kind I of mean, like you know it's the reason why Tarantino works. Scorsese, sure, uh, sure. and even Not whatever. Anything with good dialogue, any well written tight script. Correct. Right. With, with like with like with tough guys being tough guys, right? But I think the street speak in this film, right? The dialogue, I don't know how Scott Rosen, uh, Scott Rosen, the writer, like what research he did in like trying to, um, what do you call it? In unearthing this kind of, uh, the street speak. Yeah, 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 but yeah. It, but it, but it, the it, thing is, yeah, go on. I mean, it's, 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 beyond, it's beyond things like forget about it. No, and exactly. Fugazi and things exactly. like that. It's almost its own language. Some of the things they Correct. say, you don't hear anywhere else. Correct. Can you give us some examples, please? Boat drinks. Boat drinks. Okay. It's basically a greeting they have between Correct. each other. Something that we used to do all the time. No, wrong. Oh, Other sorry, hand. yes. Okay, boat drinks. Okay, tell, they, tell the audience okay. what, what the significance okay, so of boat drinks is. Okay, so when you go to prison is. and you put your hand up against the glass Correct. wall. So these little details, boat drinks was one. Put it in the wind. Uh, what else was there? You can uh, tell me where Old Denton is or you can tell it to the worms. Sure. <laughs> Buckwheats. All this like phraseology and terminology that you never heard before. Yeah. And in, initially, on first viewing, you don't quite understand what the hell's going on. Freaking sun now is blocking girls who, us girls who glide need guys who make them thumb. Okay, yeah, sure. All of these little things, you know, that don't you, that you need to watch maybe a couple of times to really appreciate the depth of it. Yes. Um. So yeah. So those that the dialogue of, of it uh, really works well for us anyway. Yes, I agree with you. Now the question is, is that like for there have been a lot of gangster screenplays. That have received like huge, huge nods, some Academy Award nominations. <coughs> well, much of Tarantino's work, right? Sure. For dialogue, yeah, right. Goodfellas, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Casino, Mean Streets. A lot of these films, True Romance as yeah. well, obviously like big, right? How do you think this holds up against those other films? Well, I think you know what the problem yeah. may have been. Go on. Maybe it was too far ahead. Maybe it was too much for the audience. I you agree. know, I mean, Tarantino has things. You understand that, you know, they talk fast and Correct. they talk cool, but you can take it in. But what the hell is buckwheats? What the hell is boat drinks? Yes. You know, what the hell is it? What, what is it? What's put a call in the note mean? Yes. You yeah, know, yeah, 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 these yeah. are the kind of this kind of phraseology they use in this film, which kind of like, unless you watch it a few times, doesn't really make sense. It still doesn't make sense. No. Put a call in the note. And you know but, what? Do you know what, what, what I? Fuck but is do, that? do you know what I think? Rosenberg. But do, but do you know what I think? <laughs> yeah. Actually. Uh, I actually think that, that that adds to its mysticism. Yes, and absolutely. I'll tell you something. And I'll tell you maybe so not for the masses. And I'll tell you something else. I think because Tarantino's films and Scorsese's films have been so celebrated, so much of the dialogue that might have gone, that might have been sort of, what do you call it, um, not, not been understood at the time, has since been kind of diagnosed and you know and dissected and explained probably from like actors who have been in the role or the directors themselves have explained what this line of dialogue meant that line of sure. dialogue but perhaps because denver is not celebrated like those other films rosenberg fledder garcia and co have not been summoned to explain sure like the uh you know what you call it uh, the intricate uh the intricate dialogue and banter all right so dialogue it, one that's <clears throat> what makes it really good just yes. very smart very witty very sharp kind of its own little language I mean, part of the part of its charm, part of its attraction. Correct. Number two, what's the second point? Why it's so well, true? I'm gonna just say Andy Garcia first of all. I just wanna like you wanna talk about Andy Garcia. Andy Garcia himself. specifically, all right? Okay, go on. But we, we should we should give a nod and uh, to, to Garcia's career, a celebrated career, right? Go ahead. 
we both love Andy Garcia. Right? Sure. Okay. I mean, not that he's had like that much of a prolific career. No. Not that he's 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 no De Niro. He's no Pacino. He's no De Niro. You Pacino. know. But, but he's no Ernest P. Worrell. <laughs> Crying out loud. Excuse me. Jim Varney. Jim Varney. Sorry, Jim yeah. Varney. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, so, you know, w- fans, actors, actors have very, very specific kind of idiosyncrasies that um, that you know over time start to define them, right? Sure. A type of way of speaking, yeah. uh, facial tics, yeah. You know, whatever. All forms of expression. Because absolutely, De Niro, Pacino, all these guys are so imitable, right? Yeah. I think Garcia, first of all, like, when did we notice him first in Black Rain, which was like 10 years well, prior? Well, yeah, I guess he came to, like, uh, most people, most people's consciousness through Godfather, in Godfather 3. Godfather 3, yeah. for which he was Oscar nominated, right? But that was a big film. But actually, like, we noticed him first in Black Rain, which was sure. like two years prior. Great film. Or, right? Where he's playing basically like... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you know, you know. Okay. So, what did we like about Garcia then? And gray hair. Amazing hair. Great suits. Amazing. I mean, just like a sort of the thing about Garcia is yeah. he has this sort of vulnerable, like nice guy quality, but also Latin ve- passion. Yes. Yeah. He's got that, but also quite a threatening, violent, like tough guy Correct. quality about Correct. it. He possesses all of those. He embodies all Correct. of those. Correct. You know, and like like, you know, quite a cool guy, quite a ladies' man, a bit absolutely, of a charmer, absolutely, all absolutely. these things. Everything a guy kind of wants to absolutely. be. Absolutely. Know? And actually in Black Rain, for those who haven't seen it, one of my favorite films of all time as well, another underrated film, right? One of Ridley Scott's most underrated films, one of Michael Douglas's most underrated films, okay? He's actually the scene stealer, Andy Garcia. Sure. Because he plays like the playboy young detective. Sure. Anyways, and that's where he came to prominence. And actually, all of the Andy Garcia idiosyncrasies and attributes okay that he would like refine and mold over the next 10 years are actually present in black rain right, right. and my favorite is the shout black rain or things to do in Denver when you're dead well first let me just okay. start oh, building sorry, up sorry. to that oh, right, right. So he's giving so you context he loves a bit of context if you haven't noticed give right? us more context okay why don't you? so we'll be here all bloody okay. nights <laughs> so you know then and a year after black rain godfather 3 sure which was you know the making of him sure right where he plays like you know the next in line of the Corleone throne. Okay. Okay. And then there is there's a, there's a bunch of actually like pretty pretty good films along the way. Mm-hmm. Man, when a man loves a woman, mm-hmm. good film. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <coughs> but we always felt, I always felt that he needed a film like Things to Do in Denver and You're Dead to like showcase himself well, he got it. A, a, as a, as an A-lister, right? He got it. Okay. It yes, was because he was never really an A-lister. He was never really an A-lister, no. but but this was the role he was meant to play. Okay. Right. As in, like, all the things we talked about, he embodied them fully. He's now the lead. He's now the lead. He's like the leader of the gang in the film. Sure, sure. He brings all the, the charm, yes. the, the slickness, the toughness. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and so on and so forth. Uh, and with great dialogue. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think this is like, this is like, was like his coming of age film. Yes. The irony being that it, wasn't. It's, it sank without trace. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but not- yes, all the amazing things about Garcia that you might like are embodied Absolutely. in this character and his character Absolutely. is called Jimmy the Saint Tosnia. Jimmy the, Jimmy the Saint Tosnia yeah alright the man who went to seminary school and lost the calling exactly another now, piece of dialogue that I at this point I think you should you know give us a bit of a Garcia impersonation the, the, the shout okay so Garcia shouter yeah what, what, what does he say you gave me your word your word your word you gave me the other day <laughs> scusi alright yes or can I give you another good. one yes please do in Godfather 3 okay that's actually one of his patented signs it's like the the re, the repeat the, the repeat re, shout the repeat statement shout the repeat so statement what he's shout saying, when he's like when he's having a <laughs> when he's when he's getting into that fight with Joe Mantegna yes. in yeah. front of Al Pacino yes. at the beginning of Godfather 3 and Joe Mantegna is antagonizing him saying like this Don Corleone all bastards are liars Shakespeare wrote poems what am I gonna do with this guy what am I gonna do with this guy very good, very good. And uh, <laughs> while we're on the subject, uh, hair coloring. Oh, the soot. But no, I think it's natural in this. He's like in his mid thirties. The jet black. The the jet the olive paste jet black. The olive paste jet black. But I but black. I but I but I think it's all natural. No, okay, fine. Okay, but okay. I'm just asking you yeah. for like how yeah, you yeah, would, yeah, would, yeah. Would, on the scale of hair coloring. On the scale. We're on, on the, the olive paste jet right. black. Yes, absolutely. Okay, fine, fine. All right, so Garcia, Garcia in this film, basically to cut his long story short is at his prime. It's like A, 
typical Garcia, like you love him, like you want him to be, like he is. Exactly. Unfortunately, didn't go very far. All right, so we've so far got dialogue and we've got Garcia. Garcia. Anything yeah. you wanted to add? I also want to say that in every great film where there's a great protagonist, there has to be an equally great antagonist and a great performance by the antagonist. Okay, and now Christopher Walken. Let's, let's talk about the cast of characters okay, now fine. beyond okay. Garcia right. because this is also very important. Go ahead, let's okay. kick off with Walken. Christopher but let's keep, you keep going. I need to check. Keep going. Christopher, Christopher Walken plays the baddie who basically summons the Andy Garcia character out of retirement for like one last job. Tells him to assemble this band of like misfits or merry men, okay, to carry out the job that all goes to hell once they try and execute it. And Christopher Walken is basically playing um, the villainous role with he doesn't have a all, name, right? all the deliciousness of a BLT. Is that a good analogy? BLT? Bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. <laughs> oh, deli okay, very <laughs> or good. Or a Juju Kubi dear. Anyway, sure. Or, so, or, or some Weetabix, uh, the new Weetabix. The beauty okay. of, of, of this character is that it's like, it's menacing. Yeah. Yet, the, the, he's called the man with the plan, the right? The man with the plan. He doesn't, he doesn't, have, doesn't a name. have a name. He no. doesn't even have no. a name. He's just called the man with the plan. His and son has a name, Bernard. Yes. He is the boss. Yeah. We should actually maybe now talk about the rest of the premise of the film mm -hmm. and how it like, what happens in it. Or maybe we don't want to give spoilers. I don't know. Anyway. Well, go on. So he is the head of the crime syndicate that yeah. is running by the way let's not forget that this film is set in Denver yeah. is also very unusual unusual exactly it's not New York it's not California it's and something else Denver Colorado and something else yeah. by the way you'd think a movie in Denver would have like an homage to or like maybe like Rocky Mountain Rocky Mountain setting but actually it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that, right? but there are references to skiing. There is, but, it, but it's, it, it, it's, it's not relevant. It's like two lines. Yeah. It's like I mean, two if you, lines. If you look at the cityscape, yeah. you wouldn't know where it's set really. Well, Gabrielle Anwar, I think her ski character instructor. is a skiing instructor. Yeah. Anyway, so yes, so we have the man with the plan who is the head of a crime syndicate and this menacing, terrifying boss that everybody is scared of. Yeah. Nobody would even defy. Yeah. Uh, Happens to also be a quadriplegic. Yeah. He's in a wheelchair. He can only operate. He By can only blowing. move. What does he have to? He, he can only like he only moves from the neck up. Yes. Right. Yes. So I mean, these kind of details, which we'll get to, are incredible in this film. Well, I guess so, it's, yes. the, it's so, the juxtaposition of being like this super powerful guy. Juxtaposition. But you're, but, but you're in a wheelchair. Exactly. Right? So we have great characters. We start off with the man with the plan, and so once the man with the plan gives Jimmy the Saint, Andy Garcia, the order to take carry out this mission, and the mission is what? To scare, it was a s strange mission. The man with the plan's son is in a, love with a girl. Well, no, but he's also you have to also give some context. He's also oh, this God, bit of context. a. This, right. He's also a bit of a. Wake like, me up with the context. He's, what is, is he? Over. He's like he's like a like okay, a listen, misfit. He's like, like he's just a spoiled brat, son of a rich guy, and he's kind of autistic. He's got mental health issues. He used to be in love with this girl. The girl like dumps him and moves on and wants to get married to this other guy. And the man with the plan sends Jimmy the Saint and to his scare crew off to send scare the off this fiance. guy. So. Yeah, so the man with the plan's son can get back with the girl he used exactly. to love. And then the plan goes to hell for a number of reasons. Anyway, so, but you're right. Again, a weird kind of premise. Yes. But it works so well. And, okay. And the aftermath of this, Yes. The, the plan getting botched, Yes. is that the man with the plan then tells Jimmy the Saint that he's got 48 hours to get the hell out of Denver. Or go he's to dead. Ro go to Rome, Jimmy. Visit the Vatican. Yes, that's what he says. Anyway, so hold on, hold on. So let's go back. Let's let's pep it up. Yeah. Uh, so 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 yeah. So what happens? So so we have the man with the plan. Yes. Um, what was I going on about? Nothing. Yes. Yeah. The cast of characters. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. So then Jimmy has to get his crew together to carry out this mission. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a piece of work. It's an action, not a piece of work. It's an action, not a piece that's of work. That's another good piece of dialogue. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's talk about his crew. Okay. So he put, he has to, he assembles a crew from back in the day. Okay, now right? let's talk about this crew. Let's talk about the characters. A band, a, like a band of like misfits. Okay. Well, they're just a band of men. I mean, you're misfits. But they're misfits. Yes, they turn they're... out to be misfits because they're not like your usual suited and booted gangster types with the peak lapels and the collar sticking no. out. Each one is different. Each one has his own like vibe. Each one you can build a whole movie around. Okay, so there's there's Easy Wind, played by Bill Nunn. Okay, right? who. I can't remember his backstory. He was in the. He was in the. He was in. The, he was in uh, 
doing some time in Sing Sing. Yeah, he's basically he's basically uh, people freak. Yeah, no, no. Well, whatever. He's he used to be an assassin, but now he's like an insect exterminator. So he's gone from killing humans to killing insects. Anyway, he was wound up wound up in prison, and uh, he's called where, where, back. Where he also apparently ate. He shit. ate shit. Like he had he to eat shit. shit as a dare, and now everybody makes fun of him because of that. So there's him. Who else is there? There's Street Williams playing Critical Bill. Treat Williams playing Critical Bill, and Critical Bill is like this psychopathic, yes. paranoid guy who thinks everybody's after him. He's like obsessed with violence. He's obsessed with like killing. He's obsessed with like. And he's a, he's a cor isn't he a mortician or a coroner? And he's also and he, uses, yeah. he uses the corpses as like body bags in to place like box, of in, place in of, terms yeah. of training. Exactly. Yeah. So there's that guy. Then, uh, and I like I always like that line when Jimmy the Sin goes to visit him. He's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "Ain't gotta ain't gotta bother him much when he's punching the life out of like." A, Dead corpse hanging on like a you know rail whatever. Yes. Then Punching there's the death de out of then it. there's uh, Christopher ahead. Lloyd playing Christopher Lloyd pieces pieces whose, whose fingers keep falling off. He's got leprosy. He's got leprosy. And he's like he's like bits of his body are like falling off during the whole film. Also an amazing detail. But like and he also what was his came what was his big thing? He did the fox trot with a two thousand dollar hooker in a Paris nightclub. Indeed. Great piece of dialogue. A great piece of dialogue. Yeah. And so we have him, and then we have who else? This uh, franchise. Franchise, William what's William his Forsyth. Name? William Forsyth, yeah. who's like this like tattooed up biker. Yeah. Who is gets takes you know a shitload of crap from his wife, who's all constantly busting his mm -hmm. walls. Okay, so this is your cast of characters. Yes. This is your crew. Are we missing anyone? No, and then obviously Garcia at the top. At the top. Yeah, and Garcia's there like. Boss. You got the nice suit. You got the seventy dollar haircut, but you are taking a dump in this video business, Jimmy. Okay, so a crazy cast of characters, and then we have, of course, the you know the love interest in the film, oh, yeah. which is played by Gabriel, Gabriel Anwar, who is like also another actor who <coughs> didn't really make yep. it, despite her beauty, despite her like being in some like big film. Gabriel Scent, Anwar, who, Scent of a Woman, who who whose brief star turn in Scent of a Woman, I would say, yes, which shot her to fame, yes, even though it's like it's like a three minute role. We're trying to do a podcast here, mate. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> it's a three-minute roll or something yes, like that. Yes. Said the woman, the tango scene, yes. the most famous scene in the film, and um, so this was didn't supposed really to be, massively kick this on. This was supposed to be her launch pad as well. Well, I mean, you know, we're talking about five-year gap between. And Set by the, the way, the chemistry between amazing. Garcia and her amazing, amazing. I mean, we we should we should also reference the first pickup line and how many times we tried to perfect it in our. Go ease. ahead. We failed. Go ahead. Do you remember? Do you remember? I can't remember offhand, but he basically sees her in a nightclub. His business partner is talking to him. You are most definitely the bee's knees. Yeah. Or no, something but he like says, that. he says, what's your name? And she's like, Dagny, Dagny, tremendous name. My name is Jimmy. And I've only got one simple impulsive question. Are you in love? Because if you're not in love, I will, what's it called? End this rhapsody. Because if I may say so, Dagny, you're most definitely the bee's knees. You glide. And then what did she say? Guy, I, I glide. Girls who glide need, need guys, guys who, who make, make them, them thump. thump. Are you going to make me thump or die trying? There you go. Aren't we the Sultan of Segway? <laughs> what are the other things? I mean, we literally tried to like yeah, memorize yeah, that. Yeah, 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 and yeah, how many yeah, girls yeah. would we pick up as a result? Zero. Zero right. point zero. Anyway, and it's course, a great pickup line. There's also Steve Buscemi, which we'll get to later. Which we'll get so to we later. have this cast of characters. Yes, we do. Which are amazing. So that's another part, like another big part of the film. What, what makes it great. These characters who you could literally make a film about individually. And the thing is, mm -hmm. they don't... The, the beauty of this film is, and this will lead us to our next, uh, mm -hmm. uh, next point, is that like... We come to these people when they are past their prime. These guys are on a slippery slope. You know, they've, they've done all the things. They've been the gangsters. They're now at home. They're retired, basically. And, but we meet them once. The, it's not like they haven't, like, peaked. They, they have peaked, I mean, sorry. They have peaked. And, then now, and now they're on, like, you know, like in their twilight years, basically. Yes. And in fact, uh, Andy Garcia, and this gets into the details, He's got out of that game and he started a new business. He's tried to go legit. And what is I love his business? This, by the way. I love this. I love this too. I love this too. Okay. So that's another great piece of writing. It's so we're going to now talk about the details, the details, the details of this. Okay. Film. So like, imagine you're a retired gangster. It would be such easy, lazy writing if he was like running like secondhand car shop, right? Or like or, a, a restaurant. Or a restaurant. Or yeah. a, what, give me, give me something else he could be. Running. I know, like a uh, like, scene. He's like, like in a casino somewhere. For right? sure. That, that, that's like that would be like the obvious thing that a retired gangster would be doing, right? Or like you know what? He's a he's a he's um what do you call it? Like um God, we're gonna run out of bounty fucking... hunter. Yeah, go on. Something like that. But anyways, he's running something called Afterlife Advice. 
Which after is, life advice is basically what is set up for like grandparents or older people to record their advice yeah their messages their kind of mottos uh whatever they want to pass on yes. to other people yeah or their you know whether it's their grandchildren or their relatives Correct. or their friends whatever it is for them for those people to look back on and listen to them so if you need to like find out like oh hey i'm like this young kid i'm having relationship advice you can go to your like grandfather's directory and see what he had to say about relationships i mean my, one of my favorite ones like who would who would come out with something Life like that is just a mustard burp momentarily tangy and then forgotten in the wind and the beauty of this is one? yes write i do down, i love that, that i love that, that i don't need to it's imprinted <laughs> in my brain the beauty of this is that advice is then used Correct. as a subtext throughout the entire film Correct. to drive that narrative forward Correct. it's genius it's so layered. yeah that's very 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 good yeah, that's yeah, a great yeah, detail yeah. where at different points in the film you know when they use the after life advice what advice do you got for this? All right. Where they're using the afterlife advice. To drive a, the plot forward. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. That's um, very, genius. very good detail. Okay, what other details are amazing about this film? The, Jack Warden. Jack Warden. Tell us about Jack Warden. Jack I'll be back. Jack, where are you going? I'm just going to check something. All right. Jack Warden is basically um, himself, I think, playing basically, it's unspoken, but like a retired kind of gangster himself. From, an, from even a preceding generation. What was Jack Warden in? He was in some of the w spaghetti westerns. He was in, uh, what was that one with the helicopter in the, f no, I don't know. Anyway, he's in a lot of films. Anyway, he's in his 70s he, in yeah. this film. He plays, he, plays, he plays grandfathers in a lot of yes, films. Yes, exactly. Anyway, exactly. So, so one thing we should tell you about Jack Warden in this film, what's his film name in this? Uh, Not in Google that while yes. I speak. Okay, so a lot, of this, a lot of the film takes place in a malt shop. For some reason, Jimmy the Saint drinks a lot of malts, which is like a milkshake. Amazing, the details. Right. Again, random. Which we and also... He, and he like crushes pills into yeah, it. We yeah, never yeah, know yeah, what yeah, that yeah, is yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, but again, yeah. it's a, a great yes. detail. So it takes place in the malt shop. And Jack Warden is constantly sitting in the malt shop. And one of the things his character does, uh, he interacts with the other you know, characters, but he's also telling the story. He's telling the story. Or the backstory of all these people. Correct. Like, this is Jimmy the Saint. This is this guy. This is that guy. The man with the plan, you know, blah, blah, blah. And this and that. Yeah. So he's giving us a sort of backstory. Correct about what's going on uh, very much like the after life advice so that's another great detail so there's two there's two basically yes like kind of yeah background yeah, yeah narratives exactly driving, the, driving story the story yeah forward. exactly absolutely and by the way who's that girl who plays the hooker she's also very famous Fairy's a bulk yeah fair is a bulk yeah. sorry yeah she's also Lucinda. very good at it okay who's uh, like we won't get into like what I'm trying to find that. I'm trying to remember what his okay. name was. So they, it's okay, don't worry about it now. Let's move. We've, we've, we've moved on. You're too slow. <laughs> anyway, so what other details do you want to talk about? Um, okay, so I so I also think I think the I think the I think the the two romances are very very good. By the way. Yeah, yeah. So but we I talked mean, about a little really bit a, like that's not really a random detail. That's more of the love story. That's more part of the, like the narrative. Okay. I mean the fact that like the the man with the plan is in a like wheelchair and is a quadriplegic again that's like a random thing it doesn't need to be like that but it adds so much well right yes i mean the fact that his son is slightly autistic also adds so much right bernard as you said correct you know um correct what else do we have we've got oh we have a gangster who's one of the henchmen of the man with the plan and the guy throughout the whole film is reading a dictionary and is using all these words that he's learned you know during the film Remind me? Auspicious occasion, Jimmy. Oh, All yes, that yes, kind yes, of stuff. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Anon. Anon. <laughs> he like constantly uses words he's learned by from reading the dictionary. Also, a, sh a, sh a shout out to Andy Garcia's wardrobe. Let me just. Yeah. Let me, because I am the Sultan of Segway, by the way. Here, okay. Do you remember the line? The line yes, we love. We've talked about this. We didn't already. say the we line. Said... What was what was his style? Okay, go on. Three button, three button, <laughs> three button ventless Jimmy classy. Armani, no. Versace, no. Hugo Boss, what's with this? <laughs> so we don't actually know where his suits were made from. Okay. All right. So yes. So there's that. And then what other details do we have in the film? Here's a seventy dollar haircut. Okay. It's reference. Oh, okay. Yes. You haven't obviously researched this part very well. 
Okay. All right. Let's move on. Let's move there on. are. Okay. You want to talk about the love stories now? I think there's there's that? three love stories. Okay. Okay. All very powerful. All equally powerful. Mm -hmm. There's the one, obviously. Let's get the, the cliched one. The one with his band of merry men, right? With his friends. Okay. With his friends. Okay. So once this like plan goes wrong, they all have hits. Put on out, them. Put on them. Except for the, except for Jimmy. Except for Jimmy. Uh, but even though we're not on, we're not sure that that's true. Anyway, no, no, regardless, we, we, regardless, okay. regardless. Um, and what's the hit called? I don't know. Buckwheats. Okay. Buckwheats is not the, what the hit's called, but okay. Um, Buckwheats is just a way of killing someone. Their fate. Okay. But anyway, you should watch the film to find out what that's going, what's what, what that's about. But anyway, so yes, so everyone is gonna get killed by the man with the plan because they fucked up the plan, right? Correct. And Jimmy they got 48 basically hours to get does his very best. Yes. In 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 essence, sacrificing himself because he, he could get out scot free. Yes. But he sacrifices himself in trying to help you know this band of brothers again. Great chemistry between them. Yes. You really feel like these guys have known each other for decades. Jimmy tries to take the heat for the plan going to hell, but the man with the plan, because they go way back, and because he respected him, he brought an element of class to the operation in the day, Jimmy. Be gone, Jimmy. Gone. Fucking gone. Or I'm going to have to buckwheat you too. All right, so now why don't you tell us about the other <laughs> love stories that you, you have researched? The relationship with Gabrielle Anwar Dagny, plays Dagny, is a fantastic love story. So we talked about his like opening like flirtation with her. And she's in about like four or five scenes, which are kind of interspersed across the movie. Um, and um, she's engaged. That's a good detail, by the way. The mm -hmm. fact that she's engaged to somebody mm -hmm. else, but she's not really sold on him. She meets Jimmy, obviously, with, all his, like, with, all, with all his like pizzazz and, yeah. and, and uh, bra bravado yeah. and his yeah, schutzpah. Right. And obviously he manages to like start a, start up a romance. But of course, you know, because it's, not, it's like not going anywhere. It's, it's a doomed relationship. Yeah, to it's some a extent, doomed relationship. Right? And you love that scene at the end. I love that scene in the end. But should we give it away? Go we on give then. it away. OK, we're going to give this. We're going to give a spoiler away at the end when Jimmy basically feels that his fate is also sealed. OK, which is uh, he basically Just, okay, doesn't want to leave her like he wants. He wants. Her to have a blossoming, thriving. Yeah, they're not going to have a future together. Yeah. Okay. So he actually proposes to to her on. I can't even remember. On, on the fiance. On the fiance's behalf. The original fiance's behalf. He buys. It's, which is actually a bit fucked up. But it's cool. But it works. It's cool. It works very well. It's cool because it's, yeah, yeah, it's him yeah, delivering yeah, yeah, yeah. it. So yeah. he, the other fiance, is like, very you, bought, you bought my engagement. You're yeah. buying my engagement. I bought your engagement ring. Yeah. Give her the ring. Right. Yeah. And he gives him the the Garcia shout. Give him the ring. Give him the ring. Does he? Yes. Don't you okay, remember? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he has to be dragged out. Yeah. His hair is all disheveled. Yeah. He's still looking cool. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's actually a very good detail. Okay. By the way. And now the third love story. The third love story is one with this kind of I think cracked out hooker. Yeah. Right? She's a hooker. That part of the that, neighborhood. Yeah. Part of the that, old neighborhood. Yeah. 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 And like yeah. And Jimmy looks out for her. He like yes. sort of protects her. He takes care of her. I mean, she's a hooker, but he doesn't like judge her in any way. Correct. And, and she's in love with him. And she's always been in love. And she with wants him. to have a baby. And she wants to have a baby. And I mean, this is another spoiler. But the fact that he knows he's doomed yes. and his time is up, he wants to leave a legacy. So in the end, they do yes he, consummate he, their love. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But also amazing scene by the way Th their dialogue is very very good yeah and it's a very different type of dialogue to yeah. the dialogue that he has with Dagby right yes 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 yes, yes. because here he's, he's almost like a uh, Sorry, he's almost like going. he's almost like um, you know like it's almost like a paternal kind of relationship right he's giving her he's giving her kind of like you know kind of like kind of like fatherly advice throughout yeah. the movie and and, and by the way, yeah. one of the coolest scenes in the movie. What? We should talk about five coolest scenes in the movie. Go on. When he assaults. Just quickly, I think. When he assaults the guy who, uh, the banker. Yes, who's he like, beats up the banker. Who, who, like, what did he try yeah, to do? There's a lot to this he film. Tried, he it's tried, very late. He tried to assault her with a bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yep. Okay. okay. What's the second one? Coolest, coolest scenes in the you film. You said five. I, I think we should talk about uh, what. Do I'm you have five? Of, I, I can think of five, five of the coolest scenes. You that's, five. that's one of the coolest scenes. Okay. Right? 
the opening flirtation is one of the coolest yeah. scenes, right? What do you, what do you, what do you open, look, open, look, open look, up your Give it a name. Oh, give it a name. We didn't even mention that the whole time. <laughs> we're saying it. So that's another piece of dialogue. It's a piece a of dialogue. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's a piece of dialogue. I said it. You I didn't, didn't say it. You said bee's knees. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, what else did we say? We said... Um, okay, by the way, the, the Mr. Shush character. Yes. Steve we didn't even talk okay, about yes, him. No, Very important over. character. Yes, he's an important character. Basically, I mean, like, let's wrap this up a little bit. Okay. But basically, so when Jimmy's plan goes wrong, the man with the plan orders an assassin to take them all out. And that assassin is played by Steve Buscemi, and his name is... Mr. Shush. Mr. Shush. He's very quiet. Yeah. And it's one of his earlier roles, I would say. I I mean, he was recognizable. He did a lot before, but... I mean, yeah. he did Reservoir Dogs before. Yeah, he did Reservoir Dogs Yeah. Before. But it's funny, he doesn't really have any lines in this film. Because he's Mr. Shush. Exactly. Right? All right. But also, that's also a good... That's also a good... Uh, what do you call it? A good detail. Yeah, all right. That's a also a very good detail. I, absolutely. No, I mean, I think that... Yeah, the yeah, fact, yeah. The fact that he actually, like... Is actually like he... He doesn't have to have a, have a word to say. He doesn't have a... Well, he's got and a he's few words. And he's very unassuming, but he takes everybody out. He's very I mean, scary. We don't want to give too much away. Menacing, yeah. Right? Um, and then... Um, what's it called? Bernard? Another interesting character. Yeah. We talked Where about are we at? Where's the, where's the thing? Where's the... Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So how does it now compare to other gangster films? Well, let, let's 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 think. We love we love our gangster films, yes. right? Yes. I mean, I think Goodfellas is my favorite film. Why I is mean, Goodfellas your favorite film? Because I think Goodfellas is, I guess, it's like a grander film. It's yes, like a, it is. It's like on a bigger budget. Yes, and with bigger stars. And big, bigger, well, yeah, I mean, you know, debatable. But yes, of course, bigger stars for sure. De Niro, blah, blah, blah. Um, but like it's just like it's it's more of an epic film. It is, and it's a longer film, right? It's a longer film. It's far longer. So there's it's more of a you know it spans a lifetime. Correct. Uh, you know, Denver is sort of a slice. Don't get me wrong, I compare them very closely to yeah. each other. But yeah, so that's how it compares to that. What do you think? I think it. I mean, I love Goodfellas too. I like yes. Casino more than Goodfellas, yes. as you know. Even though I think Goodfellas is the greater piece of work because yeah. it came first. Yeah. And so it has all the yeah. Scorsese tropes that we know today. Uh -huh. Okay. But I mean, it's not my favorite gangster movie. Yeah. I mean, you know, I love yeah. Carlito's Way. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So which how is, does it which is, by the way, I think it compares to Carlito's Way more than some of those other films. Why? Because because Carlito's Way is also a very strong love story. It, it is. It is. Right? Yes. It, it, it's more, it's and it kind of ends in the same way. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. right. It's just this sadder story, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I think Carlito's Way actually is the better probably of the of the two okay. films, probably just edges it a little bit okay um and but but never do a video on carlito's way absolutely let us know if you want but that. what else do what else do we like there's godfather which yeah I mean, no i think it, i think this is better in some ways in some ways this Why is, is better. It better that's a massive statement Why well is it better i think godfather? it's just it's just cooler it's yeah. just a bit more like pacey it's just like there's a lot happening the cost of character i mean the problem with the godfather is that like every, everyone it's a bit slow. Right. Ultimately, it's a bit slow. I mean, obviously, it's a masterpiece of modern cinema. cinema uh, but it's just a bit slow. This is a little bit more, you know, pop. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing yeah. that I think is, is very true. I actually think the script, right? Because we talk about dialogue, we talk about script a lot, right? Like, when you think of Godfather, what do you think of? You think of it as an epic, because mainly because of these kind of cinema... It's, it's a cinematography film. Yeah, it's yeah, a film yeah, about yeah, cinematography, yeah, yeah, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. right? Like, what do you think of it? It's the grand sets. Yeah. The design, you know, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. set design, the right? The set pieces. The set pieces. Whereas, and I probably think, when you talk about great gangster films, maybe the reason Goodfellas is the greatest gangster film ever. Has is, great set pieces. But but it also has such in-depth research dialogue. Yes, of course. Like, that's how they speak. Of course, of course. Right? I mean, that and sets the bar. That sets the bar, right? So, yeah. I, but I, so I think that, that obviously, um, obviously, the things in Denver is not a... Is not a phenomenal, groundbreaking piece of directorial work. No, right? Like Goodfellas or yeah, Godfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of in terms writing, of the visuals, you mean? Yes. Yeah, it's not a spectacle. Yeah, it's not a visual spectacle. Yeah. But in terms of like the dialogue. Yeah. I think it actually rivals Goodfellas, and it's not a copy at all of Goodfellas. All right. Even though we're talking. No, it's not. Even it's not a copy of anything. They're actually. gangsters. Actually, it's very original. And another interesting thing when you're trying to like, yeah. you know, the dichotomy of the three films. Yeah. You look at Godfather, which is gangsters at the top level. Yes. Goodfellas is kind of the next bracket down, mm -hmm. the street kind mm -hmm. of guy. And then you have Denver, which is kind of like the the even further down the food chain gangsters. Actually, there's yeah. if you think about where they, they place, right? Like, and um, so they're actually three tiers All of right. like gangster film. All right. But 
Oh, then he's the bot. Go on, what's the bot? Um, there's no bot. No, fuck the head. Fine. <laughs> Watch the film, you know what he's talking about. All right, please like, comment, subscribe. If you enjoyed this, I'm going to try to do a bit of uh, editing with this. Put up some pictures so you see. God knows how that's going to turn out. If you liked it, I'm no. going to post it. And if you like it, boat drinks. Boat drinks. Boat, boat drinks. drinks. Uh, I was going to say something else. I forgot. Thank you very much. <laughs>